So as an example of this is if you have Bob, the chicken vendor. He sells chickens. He sells chickens to Sally. And Sally really loves chickens. So she buys a chicken on Monday. And it costs five cents. A nickel. No problem there. She gives Bob five cents and she gets a chicken. They both walk away happy. On Tuesday, the price of chickens has gone down a little bit. And they're now two cents. Still no problem. Sally pays Bob two cents and they both walk away happy. Sally with her chicken, Bob with his two pennies. On Wednesday, chicken price is still falling through the floor and they're only worth one penny. Again, you have no problem there. But on Thursday, as the chicken price continues to plummet and a chicken's only worth half a penny, what happens then? Sally cannot give Bob half a penny. So either she takes two chickens and she's not, she's not she doesn't want two chickens. She's, uh, she can only eat one chicken a day. So what happens then? Typically what would happen then is Bob would have an IOU in his ledger and say, I owe Sally half a penny or another chicken, assuming chicken prices remain stable. But what if Sally doesn't want to buy from Bob? What if she wants to go to another vendor? So she goes to another vendor the next day and buys a half penny chicken. These are really cheap chickens. You probably don't want to eat these, but Sally's okay with that. So she buys from another vendor. Now that other vendor owes her half a penny or another chicken. So now she's out a whole penny and she has no chickens to show for it. So what do you do? You can't really do anything without another ledger, a traditional ledger like we see now, which is managed by a central authority. Bob the chicken vendor is that central authority in this particular instance, but we also have the banks and the government and any other central authority you care to name. The problem with that is, uh, with these ledgers, and we have that now with your current bank, Bank of America, any bank you want to name, they have subpenny mounts on their ledger. They are in control of those subpenny amounts. And just like in Superman 3, those subpenny amounts actually add up to a substantial amount of money. And they can make them go poof anytime they want. So you're not in control of your money. As these central ledgers grow and become bigger, they become easier to they become easier to alter, they become easier to forge, they become easier to counterfeit and commit fraud against. Because as they grow, they become more complex, and nobody can keep track of these giant, huge ledgers that happen. So you can remove subpenny amounts or even larger amounts off of these ledgers, and nobody ever notices. That's a problem, because you lose your money, the banks lose their money, everybody loses money except the people stealing the money. But this is inherent in the current ledger system. And this ledger system is what keeps track of subpenny amounts. Bitcoin does not suffer from this. It is a peer-to-peer -peer network, and a minimum of 51% of the network must agree on this ledger. Not just a central authority. 51% of everybody mining Bitcoin and using Bitcoin must agree that this ledger is accurate. It's controlled by everyone, and it's controlled by no one. So that puts you in control of your funds and nobody else in control of your funds. Unlike the traditional ledgers, as the Bitcoin network grows and the ledger becomes more complex, it becomes harder to forge, it becomes harder to counterfeit. This is directly opposite of the current system. And this is what makes Bitcoin so strong. Because as it grows, it becomes stronger instead of weaker.